Hi, hello class. Today we are going to do our accentuate the negative unit one notes for section 32 slash 33, which is multiplying and dividing rational numbers. Okay, so with multiplying and dividing, nice thing about those two operations, they follow the same rules when it comes to calculating. Okay, and they're actually a little bit easier than adding and subtracting to figure out. Um, there's a few different ways that I can help you remember what these rules are. Here's pretty straightforward what the rules are. So when you're multiplying and dividing, you are either going to have numbers that are the same sign, again, both positive or both negative, or different signs, okay? So when they are the same sign, being both positive or both negative, it's always gonna make a positive answer. And when they're different signs, when one's positive, one's negative, they always make a negative answer, okay? So here's some example. Both positive makes a positive, both negative makes a positive. So same makes a positive. And when they're different, being different results in the answer being negative. All right, now there might be a couple things that you've used in the past that might help you with multiplying and dividing. Um, some of you might have learned what I think sometimes we call the doctor triangle. Um, it's a little triangle that we can use. Um, I'll just kind of make it, can I draw, I'll draw it right here. And in the triangle, we put a plus on the top and then two negatives. How people use this with multiplying is dividing is um, whatever two things we're multiplying. So say I'm doing negative four times negative 10. That's a negative times a negative. I put my finger on the two that I'm multiplying. What's left over is the sign of your answer. So negative times negative makes a positive. Okay, if I have positive five times negative seven, positive five times negative seven, the answer would be the negative, okay? So that's a little trick that specifically works just for multiplying and dividing. So you may use that as well. One last scenario, which you may not have heard of before, but maybe you have, is a love and hate relationship. This helps you think of the sign of the answer. So here's how it works. So it says, if you love to love, well, if you love to love, would that make you a lover or a hater? Well, if you love to love, obviously that means you love, okay? How does that relate to positives and negatives? Well, if love is positive, hate is negative, that's showing you a positive and a positive results and a positive, okay? Well, let's look at all the scenarios now. What if you love to hate? So if you love hating, well, if you love hating, that doesn't make it make you a lover, that would make you a hater, right? So that's showing you a positive and a negative results in a negative. What if you hate to love? Hating to love? Well, that would also make you a hater. All right, so that's showing you a negative and a positive makes a negative. All right, what about this? What if you hate to hate? You don't want anything to do with hating. Well, that would make you a lover. Okay, so that's showing you that two negatives make a positive. So I know, kind of silly, but it does help you remember um, the rules for multiplying and dividing, okay? So again, whatever of these things you like to memorize, it's up to you to help you with your multiplying and dividing, but they just work for those two operations, okay? So let's figure this out. We've got negative seven times two, okay? All I ask myself is, are they the same or different? These are different, so it's negative. All right, and then we just multiply. Seven times two is 14. All right, these two, it's a division, but it's positive and a negative. Those are not the same, those are different. Difference always negative. So then 40 divided by eight makes five. Woo, now some fractions. Okay, we are multiplying two fractions here. First, let's figure out our sign. Negative times positive, they're different, so it's going to make it negative. Okay, now what we wanna remember when we multiply fractions, we do not have to make a common denominator. So it makes this easier, okay? So we can just go ahead and multiply our numerators. Three times four, which makes 12. And then eight times five, which makes uh, 40. But then we would need to reduce. Well, both of these numbers are divisible by four. So I can divide them both by four and I would get negative three and I would get 10. So then that would be my answer. Now there is a shortcut here. Instead of just multiplying straight across and then trying to reduce, the shortcut would be to do what we call cross-reducing. 
And that's where we look to see, do, does anything reduce diagonally across? Well, three and five, those don't have any common factors, but four and eight do. Four and eight, four goes into four one time, and four goes into eight two times. So if I cross reduce like that, then I can just say three times one, there's my three, and two times five, there's my 10. With, and that allows you to skip having these larger numbers in there. So I think that's very helpful. It's easier to reduce smaller numbers than it is to reduce larger numbers. So if you can think to cross reduce, that will help you along the way. All right, now we've got a decimal and a whole number that we're multiplying. Okay, so first of all, it's a positive times a negative. Those are different signs, which will make a negative answer. So now how do we multiply those? Well, when you're multiplying with a decimal, you do not have to line up the decimal. What we can just do, I know some of you have learned some lattice things and whatnot. I'm just gonna show you the standard way of multiplying. So if I take 2.5 times four, okay, we just take five times four, which would be 20. So I put the zero and carry the two. And then two times four is eight, plus two would be 10. And then we keep that decimal, or sorry, the decimal, since it's one spot over, we move our decimal one spot over. So it would be 10.0, or we don't need a .0 after it, so it would just be plain old negative 10. Now, many of you could probably multiply those maybe without writing it this way. A lot of times when I'm using decimals, sometimes I think of it like money. I can think of 2.5 like $2.50, and if I had four sets of $2.50, well, two sets of $2.50 together would make $5. So if I had four of them though, then I'd have five and five together would make 10. So that's just if you can do it in your head, fantastic. This is the writing it out, how to find the answer there. All right, now we are multiplying some mixed numbers here. Well, when we're multiplying our mixed numbers, we cannot leave them mixed numbers or we will not get the right answer. Anytime you multiply fractions, you have to make mixed numbers improper to get the right answer. Okay. Now the negative does not affect us making it improper. We still do five times three, which is 15, plus two, which is 17 fifths. And then we carry the negative down. Okay, times then, three times one is three, plus one would make four over three. And we got that negative there. Okay, now I've got a larger number in there. So I'm gonna see, can I reduce? Well, let's see, four and five does not reduce. Neither does 17 and three. So I just have to go ahead and multiply some larger numbers. First, I'm gonna check, I'm doing a negative times a negative. Those are the same, so that would be a positive. So then we can just multiply. Well, let's see, I know five times three, that's 15. I can do that one easily. And then 17 times four, well, if you need to do that out to the side, 17 times four, let's see, four times seven is 28. Let's put the eight, carry the two. And then one times four is four, plus two would make six. So that would be 68 then on top. All right, um, now we already established it didn't reduce. So this would be the improper answer. We could also write it as a mixed number. So let's see, 15 goes into 68. Well, two 15s is 30, and two 30s is 60. So that would be four times for 15 to go into 68. So four 15s would be 60, which would leave eight then left over out of 15. All right, one more problem. So we got 1.5 divided by 0.3. All right, I don't have any negatives here. So I know two positives, they're the same sign, it's gonna make a positive. So you might be thinking, well, how do I divide with decimals? Here's a little trick. We know that a division, yes, we can write it like this. We can also write division like this, as if we do with a fraction, right? So we can write it like this. Now there's a reason I want you to write it like this. Okay, we've learned all along that, you know, when you're making common denominators, as long as you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, it doesn't change the fraction. Well, here's a little trick. If I look at these, anytime you have a decimal, if you multiply a decimal, one decimal place by 10, it just moves your decimal place over. So if I multiply both my numerator and my denominator by 10, all that does is it makes this 1.5, it moves it one spot over, makes that 15, and then it moves the decimal over on this, 0.3 moves over and would make it just three. So then, oh, that looks a lot easier than 1.5 divided by 0.3. 
We know 15 divided by 3. That's just plain old 5. That's your answer. And we don't have to go back and move decimals or anything because all we did was write this division. We wrote it like a fraction and we multiplied them both by 10. So this, the answer to this is the same as the answer to this. So when you're dividing decimals, that's a great trick to help you realize how to get your answer. Okay, so again, multiplying by 10 just moves your decimal one spot over. All right, so that's it for your lesson on multiplying and dividing rational numbers.